Hello and welcome to Frank's School. Now you're going to see three views of Shir Shirley's, Shirley's views of that day. She also photographed and filmed. And uh, her, I love seeing these because we were looking at the same place. Uh, but, and, and in a lot of ways, she looks at the things I look at, but slightly differently. Uh, she spent more time filming the water itself, for example. I spent more time filming the stonework, but anyway, uh, and you, you know, you might think, well, maybe I'm beating this to death, uh, so many videos of this place, but as I said yesterday, I think it's worthy. Uh, I hope, uh, I hope people look at these. I hope people decide, whoa, I'd like to see that. Uh, now, it, the video jumps some in uh, uh, her, her video. It, it did for me anyway, and I suspect it, it will as well once it goes on YouTube. Sorry about that. Uh, oh, uh, oh, and, and her two slideshows, uh, they share a lot of the same uh, uh, pictures, uh, photographs. One is to the sound of falling water. The other is to, to the sound of music. Uh, take your choice. <laughs> I like them both. I think this one's a little bit longer. But, uh, but anyway, I, I enjoy them. So I think I've done enough of explaining about the site, and, and if you wanted to, you could find it. Um, now, it occurred to me that I almost went over the line yesterday of preaching and not teaching. I don't think I did, but it was close, and one of these days I will go over that line. Uh, when I was talking about centralization and, and decentralization um, and, and the beauty of those mills, um, uh, in a sense, I, I just sort of made up that word, anti cack shock. Uh, on this trip back in the, the uh, Newark airport, I, I had described cack shock. I, I thought I was, had suffered, genuinely suffered, from kilocalories as currency shock because I was immersed in such an orgy of energy use. In that extremely centralized world of an international airport, uh, well, here, <laughs> this this was as different as it could be. I mean, those mills were built by hand. You know, you, you could measure the work in the construction of those mills in cal kilocalories, uh, the human uh, human effort, uh, and the power generated by the water coming down could be measured in kilocalories. I wouldn't be surprised if each one of those mills generates a half horsepower, maybe one horsepower, maybe. Uh, so if you'd add them all up, uh, you, you could come up with maybe 57 horsepower, which is a lot of power. <laughs> uh, and if, you know, with a penstock and at the bottom, that, that would be a fairly powerful thing. But see, it was decentralized. And, and, and there was just the right amount of power delivered to do that little job of grinding grain uh, at a given time. Um, but anyway, I, it'll, at a later point, I'll probably actually preach about this. I ha don't know if I've mentioned this. I, don't, I'm not, I probably have. I also wrote something called Wedge's Paradigm, which later within the third year, as a matter of fact, before too long, I'm going to run through Wedge's Paradigm. And it deals with <clears throat> centralization and decentralization. In a sense, it's a justification of decentralization. Uh, but uh, you'll see that in there, not directly, I, I try to approach this as science, but there's a morality for me. That's why I say I could go across that line. There's a morality for me. I think decentralization is a good thing. <laughs> That's why I call it a decentralist manifesto, but, but it is revolutionary. And once again, I'll stop. Uh, this is a course where I teach, not a pulpit where I preach. Not yet. Uh, all right, well, enjoy Shirley's view, and, and then uh, after this, the next time we're going to go on to our, our next adventure. See you then.